Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about cirrhosis. It's a common area in our practice and I get several questions from you as to what is cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is essentially scarring of the liver. The liver is an organ that sits right below the right rib cage here, helps in digestion of food, helps in producing bile that helps in digestion. In addition, it works in synthesis of proteins, synthesis of cholesterol, synthesis of other useful substances in, in, uh, for the human body. It also it helps in detoxifying stuff. For example, medications that we take are detoxified by the liver or impurities in the blood are also detoxified in the liver as the blood flows through the liver. What I have here is a model of a liver. The liver sits under the right rib cage here and this is approximately the shape and size of the liver. Normal liver tissue which is healthy is this color and what we're talking about today is the far end of this liver model here where the liver gets scarred. So the definition of cirrhosis is that there is damage or scarring of the liver and as the liver gets scarred it tries to regenerate it's got a fantastic regenerative capacity and as it tries to regenerate it forms these nodules so a mix of the scarring and a mix of these nodules is what's cirrhosis of the liver cirrhosis is commonly thought and associated out there with alcohol but there are other causes of it and we'll talk about it what I have on this slide that's projecting on your screen now is that the blue it's a it's the sample that we take we've, that we can take out of the liver and look at it under the microscope so this this area if you take a needle take take a piece of tissue and put it under the microscope is how that will look the blue is the scar tissue and the pink is the regenerating nodules and a combination of this is what's called therefore cirrhosis what causes cirrhosis? The three most common causes in our country is chronic hepatitis C. We have talked about hepatitis C before. I think chronic hepatitis is a condition where either through IV drugs, inhaled drugs, blood transfusions, tattoos, etc., an infection enters the bloodstream. And unlike regular infections, it can stay for years and quietly damage the liver. So that's chronic hepatitis C. That's one of the common causes along with alcohol. Um, alcohol puts fat into the liver and there's also a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease where fat can get in because of putting on weight around the middle or having a condition that predisposes to diabetes and high blood pressure called metabolic syndrome. We've talked about that in my previous posts. But between chronic hepatitis C, alcohol, and fatty liver these are the three most common causes of cirrhosis and these then cause the liver sometimes not to function and that can be a uh, 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 that can precipitate a need for liver transplantation other causes of chronic uh, of liver disease uh, could include there's a condition called hemochromatosis this is a genetic condition Normally the body is primed to absorb as much iron as the body needs but in hemochromatosis the body just goes nuts and pulls in a lot more iron which then gets deposited in the liver, the skin, pancreas, heart and then can cause the cirrhosis. Other causes of cirrhosis include other than alcohol and fat in the liver and chronic hepatitis C there can be a condition called chronic hepatitis B which is acquired through, through uh, IV drugs, uh, blood transfusions, uh, uh, sexual contact, which is unprotected, and that can cause chronic liver damage and cause cirrhosis. There are some medications that can occasionally cause cirrhosis, but that's less common. There's a condition called primary biliary cholangitis or PBC. It's an immunological condition where the immune system starts irritating the liver mostly in women sometimes in men and over a period of time can cause the same kind of scarring there is a condition called primary sclerosing 
cholangitis which this is a condition where the bile ducts so the liver uh, sits up here and there's a bile ducts that are inside the liver that collect and form a tube that then drains out of the liver and primary sclerosing cholangitis is a condition where the immune system starts attacking those bile ducts over a period of time the bile ducts kind of can get scarred up or closed up and that can cause cirrhosis there's a condition called wilson's disease this is also a inherited disease sometimes the body uh, is uh, able to uh, it's a disorder of copper you know our body needs smaller amounts of copper to function and it's a disorder of copper metabolism uncommon but we we'll, we we'll look for it uh, there are other causes that have uh, 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 listed there uh, uh, in addition to this there's a condition called alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency alpha 1 antitrypsin is a uh, uh, enzyme that courses through our body and acts as a housekeeping enzyme and cleans it up if our body doesn't produce enough of that the liver can get damaged so that that's an uncommon cause of cirrhosis but we look for that uh, as well um, very rarely liver problems can be pa associated with celiac disease liver problems can be associated with the immune system attacking the liver and causing scar tissue sometimes right heart failure can cause liver problems so if the heart fails there's backup of blood and it can scar the liver and sometimes there can be cysts in the liver what we call polycystic disease of the liver so in other words cysts are like small bubbles in imagine the liver started with these bubbles and there's so much of that that the liver can't function so all of these are therefore causes of cirrhosis and if uh, 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 any of these ring a bell uh, uh, you know uh, continue to read about it and think about it uh, so that you you can recognize it in yourself or in friends how do you recognize it there are some signs and symptoms one sign is what we call spider angiomata these are small punctate or very spot like blood vessels that can blanch you know they almost look like a blood vessel they're in the upper half of the body not on the hands but on the upper hands upper part of the body and if you touch it they look like a small uh, birthmark kind of thing and they blanch so if you didn't have them before and people start getting them that's a sign of liver disease there's a condition called clubbing and in this the fingertip nail normally looks normal but in this clubbing there's a condition where the 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 angle between the nail bed where it meets the finger can get altered so that's what's called clubbing and it can be a sign of internal diseases among which liver disease is one of them the third symptom or actually not symptom rather but sign is a condition called dupuytren's contracture and if the fingers the 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 ring finger and the little finger start getting scarred up like this and there's a a, a, a fascia here called palmar fa, uh, fascia and if that starts getting contracted and that can happen with liver disease and cirrhosis the fingers start contracting like this uh, uh, that can be a sign of uh, uh, liver disease the other sign of liver disease can be fluid development in the belly occasionally have patients come to me and tell me hey listen i think i'm putting on a lot of weight you know sometimes of course uh, you know weight gain can put on fat around the gut and that can cause the belly to bloat but sometimes fluid build up inside the belly uh, can cause the fluid to belly to puff up and that's called ascites most times there's also some leg edema that can develop or uh, fluid on the legs so that the legs start getting swollen yellow jaundice uh, either in the white of the eye or in the palm of the hand that i have on the slide can be a sign of liver disease uh, 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 and th th that's uh, towards the end of liver disease so it's not an early sign but sort of a later sign so these are a few signs by which you can actually look at your own body and say hey uh, you know is this something that i should seek medical attention to so in therefore today's post in summary is there are a number of causes of cirrhosis cirrhosis is scarring in the liver along with the liver regenerating into nodules but the combination of that scarring and regeneration uh, makes the liver a liver difficult to function over a period of time uh, common causes include fatty liver alcohol related fat uh, fat in the liver 
or chronic hepatitis C and of course there are a number of other causes that I've just gone over. We've looked at the signs which can include this contracture here, the yellow jaundice, fluid on the belly uh, uh, and the spider angiomata that we talked about. So thank you uh, for your attention to this. This is how we think about cirrhosis and the approach to cirrhosis, how we treat it, what we look for. Uh, we'll talk uh, again. Um, thank you. Of note is that I'm going to change the post to a monthly frequency for the next few months uh, till we kind of get things organized. So uh, I appreciate you continuing to uh, tune into this. This information is for you to use, for you to educate yourself and for your family members. Thank you.